good afternoon and welcome everybody to the 12th in the um, the London seminar series co-sponsored by the University of Warwick and the Education Employers Task Force on uh, research themes surrounding employer engagement in education. Um, we're very excited today because we're, uh, we have um, Karen Powell-Williams from the University of Westminster to talk about employer engagement in university education, which is something which we've not really covered too much in the past. Um, Karen is Emeritus Fellow at the University of Westminster. She's an Associate Fellow of the British Psychological Society, a Fellow of the Chartered Institute for Personnel and Development, um, and an Auditor for the Quality Assurance Agency, which yep. must be a, a fascinating <laughs> job. Uh, Karen is going to, Karen's going to talk about um, a quality of exploration of um, students' accounts of their placement experiences. Uh, please welcome Karen Powell Williams. Thank you very much. Um, well, as many of you are in fact from higher education, I perhaps would need to um, say quite as much as I was going to on placements, but or what placements are. But um, I'd just like to thank you for inviting me because it's an opportunity really, well I'd, I'd hoped it was an opportunity to get employers more involved in what the whole learning through work um, business is, um, but um, hopefully some of them will, will see this. Um, so in our research study um, we were looking at placements um, by those, I mean uh, sandwich placements pre predominantly, one year long um, taken outside of the university between the second and third year. And we did this across um, several schools in the university. We also looked at shorter placements, which were part time. So we had a variety of different experiences here, but the data that we got most information about was the year long placement which in the business school were paid placements and in the psychology department tended to be unpaid placements. We also looked at a work experience module in the law school, which again tended to be unpaid and tended to be part-time work, but was essential for the lawyers for getting future employment. Um, the benefits of placements have been documented for many years and, and some of you will know that um, in the kind of form that I'm talking about they go back to about the 1960s when vocational education um, was developed through what were then the polytechnics and the CNAA um, and the benefits obviously of developing employability skills whilst you're at work um, and of um, getting a foot in the door for your future job um, have, work, have been well documented. So um, I think the Association of Graduate Recruiters introduced this phrase of work readiness. So the value of placements has been acknowledged. We also thought, or I thought some years ago, that there was enhanced academic performance that our post-placement students tended to do very well. So I was very interested in finding out more about this. And a study I did of uh, students in 2004 suggested that, but we, we wanted to do a proper um, large-scale study with a statistical analysis to see how significant it was. Why students do better as a result of doing placements? There have been a number of uh, theories about this. For example, that students are more motivated and focused as a result of doing a placement, being at work, they come back to university and they've got greater focus and greater motivation is one of the things that um, has been noted. That they may see more relevance in their studies to their future work they're able to apply what they've learnt, that they've developed organisational skills, and that obviously they've got greater maturity as a result of being a year out. I think things have changed in the last 20 years in that our students aren't necessarily 18-year-olds when they go to university. So we have more students who are starting at an older age of 21 or above. 
Um, so maybe this year out and maturation is not so significant as, as had been thought. Um, another bit of background about this, many of you will be familiar with the Deering Report of 1997 and two of the recommendations, recommendations 17 and 18 of that, um, were really promoting the um, value of work experience for students that this was something that all undergraduates should have to make them more prepared for the world of work. So there's quite a lot of evidence and quite a lot of central um, impetus towards favouring placements. Nevertheless, we know that placements have been declining. Um, in 1994 to 5, about 14.2% of all full time first degree students in the UK were on sandwich degrees and doing a placement. But by 2009 to 10, this was down to 9.4%. And I think it's interesting also that HESA um, no longer classifies degrees as first degrees and sandwich degrees. They used to be separated. Sandwich degree was seen as something special. They're now just all lumped together, so it's quite difficult to compare figures. Anyway, our figures in this country are well below that of the European Union. Um, I won't go into other factors like fees and so on which may have affected this. Um, so despite the fact that we know there are benefits, and my uh, feeling that the students perform better academically, there's been no research focusing on the psychological dimensions of what happens to people on placement. And that was one of the things that I particularly wanted to look at. We needed to prove or not whether they performed better, we needed to find out what the changes were, and there were a number of other things we did as well um, about looking at barriers um, to placement as well. So it seemed con timely con to conduct this research and this is what we did. It was an 18-month project, started in 2010. We um, employed um, a part-time researcher to gather the data. It's an interdisciplinary team. We focused mainly on level fives, that second-year students who had not done a placement on placement students who were out in placement and level sixes, some of whom would have done a placement and some who hadn't. So some of them were third year and some were fourth year if they'd done a placement. We also gathered data from tutors and employers and we did a quantitative and qualitative analysis. So what we wanted to know was, do placements make a difference? And if so, in what ways and why? And what causes this difference? And why don't more students take placements? And what support do placement tutors need? And what are the views of employers? So let's look first at the um, quantitative data we had about 1,300 students in our sample. Uh, if I just focus on the 2008 to 9 students, those who graduated in 2009. So we looked at their results. We also looked at their entry qualifications. That's very difficult because entry qualifications aren't numerically uh, similar. So we wanted to look at UCAS points because that is comparable. A lot of students don't have that, they have BTECs of various forms. And we wanted to look at gra year grade averages. Um, no, before we come to that, <laughs> let me say a bit more. Um, I said the original sample was a 1300, and we did the analysis on 1300 and we found differences, but because the numbers of students doing placements compared to those who didn't was unequal, there were certain kinds of statistical analysis we couldn't do and make it robust. So we had to get equal numbers of those who'd done placements and those who hadn't for a robust statistical analysis. And we ended up with about um, 111 
in each group, 222. We did this on a random uh, sample. We selected out um, uh, those who'd um, taken a placement and took um, a random number, of, a random sample of students who hadn't to make the numbers even. And we found that there was a, a statistical difference. So, whether you took a placement, these ones didn't. Oh! <laughs> mustn't touch it. And this group did. What you would expect is, if there was no effect of placement, you would expect about the same numbers to get first class, two ones, two twos and thirds, whether you've done or not done a placement. But what we found was that if you had done a placement, you were more likely to get a first class degree than if you hadn't done a placement. So you'd expect, oh, seven of those is very difficult. Um, you'd expect seven of um, those students um, to get a first, in fact, 12 did. You'd expect seven of those to get a first, in fact, only two did. So, and the same happens at the other end. I would expect equal numbers here. So you'd expect nine of this group um, to get a third. In fact, only three did. You'd expect nine of those to get a third. In fact, 15 did. So taking a placement was affecting whether you got a first or a two-one. You were more likely to than if you hadn't taken the placement when you were more likely to get a third or a 2-2. Two -two. Okay, so I was explaining to Tony beforehand, we have a mass of slides, I've cut it down to three to make this as simple as possible. Um, and that was uh, stati statistically significant. Okay, so you might think then it's the students who are better academically who take placements and get a first class degree. So let's have a look at that. And we found when we looked at UCAS um, points that those who had, let's say, higher UCAS points were no, no more likely to get a higher class of degree than those who had lower UCAS points. So um, there wasn't a significant difference in having high UCAS points, UCAS points being higher A-level grades. Okay, so your A-level grades on entry are not going to determine if you do a placement whether you get a higher class of degree. Um, so we then had a look at grade averages and basically um, which slide am I on here? I'm on slide nine. Um, we, what we found was that um, there was a significant difference that the placement year affected, uh, was affecting the final year averages. So those students at level five in the second year did not have any differences in their academic performance, but by the time they had taken a placement and came to the final year, their grade averages were higher. So there was some effect taking place in the placement year. What we haven't done is trace this case by case. That would be a, another stage uh, where we could look at individuals and see how it affected. So it affected their performance. So we're only looking at this stage at the cohort as a whole. Okay, so there's something about the placement year that seems to be affecting performance. And there are questions <coughs> that we raised about this. Maybe it's something to do with personality factors rather than academic performance or intelligence or it could be motivation. And we, we, we looked at a number of things um, to see whether self-efficacy, locus of control, confidence, 
and so on. Um, emotional intelligence. We haven't yet found a statistical difference between the placement and non-placement students, but these scales were very short. They were incorporated within a larger questionnaire, and I don't think we've got yet a sensitive enough um, or sensitive enough measuring instruments for that. It's something that I think there's still room to pursue. Whether students who arrive at university have greater social, emotional intelligence, self-efficacy and so on, and then go on to choose placements and get better degrees, we don't know. Or whether the placement itself produces those things. That would be the next area that I would like to look at. This was the area that I was most interested in. Um, so I'm not going to look at that now. I'm just going to look at some of the things that were presented at the JVET, um, which was information that the students have written about themselves through their logbooks. So all the students in our um, survey, both in business psychology and in law, kept logbooks whilst they were doing their placement, year long or the um, accredited module. And the thing about the logbook is it's the student recording their own feelings um, and observations about themselves as time goes along. So it's a contemporary study. It was also data that we had easily available. And so we had these students in that sample. Um, Karen looked at those logbooks. Um, and um, you know, the students had to reflect on their learning and so on. And um, okay, yes, yeah, so it, it happened at that time rather than re retrospectively, because a lot of the survey data you get is retrospective. How did you feel about something? Why did you do it? And so on. But this was as it happened. Um, and it also was something that was used for assessment, so it was easily available, and it was available to us to analyse as it was part of the assessment although we did ask the students if we could have access to it. Um, from this, a theoretical thematic analysis was done, looking at um, underlying ideas about transformation and change. So we were looking at how the student perceived themselves to be changing as a result of their placement. Um, and so it was coded, and then a second stage was done to put it into a sort of higher order of uh, theory. And two themes emerged, first on communication and confidence, and then at identity and professionalism. So, if we start up here, and I'll try not to touch the screen, this is what we found, that students were feeling out of their depth when they first went into work. This didn't matter whether it was the short-term law thing, as the accredited module, or the whole year of psychology or business students. Um, and they knew they were accountable for the mistakes that they would um, make. They had to overcome shyness and a lack of confidence, or rather they, they did feel shy and lack confidence to start off with. And they also found themselves tackling unfamiliar situations and a whole range of tasks which increase. As time went on, they gradually developed a feeling that they could manage this themselves. They didn't have to keep going and asking for help. And they also understood a, a bit more about what it meant to be working in a professional environment, the norms of the workplace how you address your boss, how you, how you dress to go to work. I mean, we, we tell them this beforehand, we prepare them, but um, they don't believe you, of course, until you're actually there. Um, things about turning up for work and also um, providing good quality work. Um, just to say, um, before this study uh, started, I'd interviewed placement students, and one of the, the things that they'd said to me was that at university, if I hand in a piece of work, I get a mark for it. You know, I might get 53%. And that's okay, I just go away with it. I'm not asked to do it again and do it better. 
But at work, if I do something that isn't good enough, I've got to redo it. So I have to set my standards much higher in the first place. I, I thought it was very significant, actually, as an academic, to hear that I'm students feel they aren't asked to do it again. I think some things are changing now in assessment in higher education about getting <coughs> students to reflect and do things again, but they definitely felt that about work. Okay, so um, that was theme one. And here are some examples of um, the sorts of things they said which got coded into this category. I'll give you just a moment to read it. Feeling out of depth. Right, it will be on your website. So, overcoming shyness. Tackling unfamiliar tasks, situations, and increasing range of tasks. Developing autonomy and developing uh, understanding professional conventions. Okay, so from this developed theme two, identity and professionalism. You can barely read that here. Um, so students had to understand their role in the organisation, they had to prove their capability, gain acceptance and validation from their co-workers and this in turn led them to adopt professional behaviour, thus reinforcing their identity and professionalism. So what we got is a transformation in the student, in their self-perception and their ability to deal with their environment, their identity as a professional at work, and obviously their confidence improving. And here are some of the quotes from this section. That was nice didn't know that I was a student which really pleased me so, so you know being a student adopting professional behavior understanding the role in the organization And so then, if we blend these two themes together, we got, get a sort of hierarchy of what happens. The student starts with initial challenges. They don't necessarily have the communication skills required at work, lack of knowledge and so on, no confidence, highly stressful. They start engaging with the challenge, doing the job, taking on responsibility, they're able to model their professional behavior on their supervisors and so on and engage with the team. This increases their skills and increases their knowledge. Increase in their self-efficacy and levels of self-confidence. They start becoming a full team member and they change their identity. And this is what one student said, I was not just a student, which is just such a wonderful And um, here we have an example of one student's quotes taking them through that process. I was the least qualified and up to I feel that I'm contributing to the organisation and that my opinion does matter. 
Okay, so we've seen something about the academic performance of the students, and we've seen something about the change in identity. Um, and I thought you would be interested in knowing something about what we found out from employers, that's to say the placement supervisors. So we um, asked a number of questions. Um, why do you offer placements and so on and so forth. Um, and, oh, no, wait a minute. Oh, I haven't said here, I haven't got a separate slide, sorry. The methodology, we had 21, only 21 supervisors who completed the survey. The supervisors were people who regularly, 74% of them regularly have uh, Westminster placement students, and 89% of them have full-time year-long placements. So it was quite good from our point of view. They were our, the, the kind of employers that our students went to. Uh, and so we asked them what changes they found. And um, they said there were a number of benefits for the organisation. They liked having students because it was new talent that they could survey. And of course you all know about the year-long interview, recruitment interview. So it's pre-recruitment to the full-time permanent job. They like students because of their enthusiasm and creativity. They are cheaper than full-time um, employees. They might be cheaper than full-time. And, but never, and nevertheless, they were um, intelligent, skilled um, people, but who could help with the more basic tasks. So they weren't afraid of asking them to do some of the more basic tasks. The benefits for students, they thought, was that there was a range of experiences that they would get with them at work. I think there are far more benefits for students than just that, but that's what they reported to us. The changes that they saw in students, they thought the students communicated better with clients as a result of being there in the workplace that there was an increase in their confidence and an increase in their workplace skills. In fact, the skills area we document quite in, in some detail. We get the student and employer, in the business school, we get the student and employer to rate skills each month of what they've been doing and what they've developed, and then we get an overall rating at the end. So we've got more information here which uh, hasn't been analysed. Um, what employers wanted was they wanted better monitoring of students whilst on placement. I think that needs to be unpacked, what that means. They wanted more information about individual students beforehand. And in fact, 99% of these placements are successful. The unsuccessful ones, which those of you who've been concerned with placement will know about, are, are pretty rare. But like all institutions, universities have a range of person, <coughs> personality types and mental health problems, and they're obviously going to crop up from time to time. Uh, they also wanted more contact with tutors prior to placement. I think there's a bit of uncertainty about what the employer's role is and what they can be doing. So our conclusion so far, I have my five minutes, um, Doing a placement is good for the student's academic performance. So this is an area where universities can add value quite clearly, regardless of entry qualifications. We can improve students' performance just by sending them out to work for a year. The university doesn't have to do very much for that, <laughs> except monitor it, encourage it, and uh, keep an eye on it. Students change positively as a result of their um, experiences on placement. We don't have any evidence of students being adversely affected, um, or we haven't looked for that yet. Um, there are barriers to placement. I haven't talked about that at all, but we've looked at the barriers, um, and there are barriers both for students and tutors. Financial barriers are one of the main ones, information <coughs> barriers for students. Tutors, information, uh, they don't know what placement is, so, and it's not highly regarded in the universities, so that's a barrier. 
but they see placements as largely positive. So some questions for discussion, uh, just to start the ball rolling. What causes the transformation in the student as a result of their year of work? Oh, we didn't find that the short-term placement